registered dietitian and nutritionist, and she's going to talk about the keto diet. So that's been the latest um, dietary fad that's come up. Uh, every every time you hear Atkins, Paleo, Keto, this is the latest fad that's come up. And she's going to talk about the science that is behind um, the diet and what the long-term implications are for um, around health. So thank you, Lee, for, uh, for coming out and talking. Thank you, Gwen. Hello, everyone. Just a moment. We're waiting. I like to build the suspense. Okay. Well, while we're waiting, just a show, quick show of hands. Who's heard of a keto diet? Okay, that's almost everyone. Who knows someone who's tried it or is on it right now? Okay, so almost everyone. So good. This will be a nice, relevant presentation, assuming it ever comes up. Ah, excellent. All right. So let's get started. So we're going to talk about what a keto diet actually is. We're going to talk about, you know, does this work? People go on it for weight loss. They go on it for diabetes. Does it actually do what, it's, what it claims it can do? What are the risks? And then we're going to tackle some of those frequently asked questions that I'm guessing some of you have in your heads right now. All right, so first, what is a keto diet exactly? Well, it drastically decreases carbohydrate intake, slashes it, and increases fat intake. And in theory, it should also decrease protein intake. But in practice, what does it do? High protein, right? It tends to be high protein. What this does, the low carbohydrate and high fat intake, it triggers ketosis. That's your body's emergency backup system. And what that does is your body wants to run on glucose, that's sugar. It wants to run on carbohydrate. But instead, if you deprive it of carbohydrate, it needs a backup because your brain and your nervous system can only run on glucose or a substitute. So ketosis is the process of making a substitute from fat in an emergency. So get ready, buckle your seatbelts. There's gonna be some science coming at you. You thought you were here for free food, right? Yeah? You're gonna find out what happens to that free food right now. So your liver is sort of this central processing system. Everything you eat eventually makes its way to the liver. So you guys know your three macros, right? Sound familiar? Carbs, yeah, nods, protein, and fat. Okay, so first we're gonna follow what happens to carbs. So you guys are eating your little falafel sandwich or some carbs in there, right? What happens to those? They enter the bloodstream as glucose, and that's used as fuel. So it's fuel for the fire, your body burns it, your brain can burn it, your other organs can burn it as well. So any excess you eat of any carb of these carbs, protein or fat, will get stored as fat. Next, protein. Protein enters the bloodstream as amino acids, and those are used for tissue repair to help you rebuild your muscles and other tissues in the body. And then fat comes in, and it enters, it goes through a slightly more circuitous route. It comes in, it's used as free fatty acids, and any excess is stored in the fat. And the same is true for protein, by the way. If you eat too much protein, you're not just gonna get huge muscles, you're gonna put on fat. Okay, so now let's talk about ketosis. And the most potent inducer of ketosis is fasting. So no food at all. That's the very most intense keto diet you can go on. So what happens? No more carbs, no more protein, no more fat. Now, your body still needs glucose to run, so your body actually has stored glucose in your liver. Your body's onto this. You have glucose in your liver for about 10 to 18 hours. But about four to six hours into that, your body says, ooh, this is really a problem. We're, we're kind of running low here, so we need to come up with a backup solution. So your body goes to plan B, which is called gluconeogenesis. Gluco, sugar, right? Neo, new, genesis, creation. Your body's gonna make its own glucose because it really wants to run on glucose. What's it gonna use to make that glucose? Anyone know? Ah, this is a little bit of a trick question. It's gonna use your muscle tissue. It's gonna break down muscle tissue and it's gonna use as many of those amino acid building blocks as it can to make glucose so that your brain and your nervous system can keep running. Now, after two to three days of this, your body realizes that, oh man, we are in big trouble here. So this is when ketosis kicks in. Your fats, which your body can burn, some tissues can burn, your, your muscles can burn them directly, but your body's gonna take those fats and turn them into ketones. That's the substitute that your brain can use to run when there's no glucose around. Okay, you guys made it through the science. I'm very proud of you. This is gonna be important for later. Keto diet 
How do we trick the body into doing ketosis while we're still eating? Well, the key way to do that is to take almost all the carbohydrates out of your diet because you're gonna reduce all the glucose coming in. So there's very little glucose coming in now. What happens? Well, some people think I'm just gonna eat a ton of protein. That's gonna help me in ketosis. My muscles are gonna get huge. No, most of it is going to go to gluconeogenesis because again, your body will jump through all kinds of hoops to run on glucose. So what happens is a little tiny bit will go to tissue repair, just the bare minimum. The rest of it, your body's gonna turn into sugar so it can burn the fuel it wants to burn. And the rest of it, again, gets shunted into gluconeogenesis. And then your body is going to take the fats that you consume in the diet if you're eating a keto diet, and it's gonna use some of them to burn, extra will get stored, and the rest is gonna be used to make ketones. Again, it's good to have your brain running, yes? Okay, so now we're gonna talk about the different types of keto diets. Now, the original keto diet was famine. That's right, we talked about that being the most potent, effective way to induce ketosis. But that doesn't seem like a long-term solution, right? So what do we have? There are a couple different kinds. First, there's a classic ketogenic diet. This is actually a medically specific term. It is 90% of its calories from fat, so it's extremely high fat very little carbohydrate, two to 4%, and actually low in protein. The RDA for protein is around 10% of calories. This is six to 8% of calories. They use this diet to help people who have drug-resistant epilepsy control their seizures, and you actually have to be hospitalized to start this because it's that dangerous. Now, the Atkins initiation phase is also a, a sort of extreme ketogenic diet, and you can see the car calories from fat drop way down. The calories from protein are pretty, are pretty high. And then of course the calories from carbs, almost none. Now in the research literature, a, keto di a diet that is ketogenic is one that has less than 50 grams of carbohydrate per day. That's about 10% or less of calories. That reliably triggers ketosis in most people. And that's actually just a subset of low carb diets. Low carb diets are diets that, that's that sort of borderline where people will start really entering ketosis, but it's not necessarily going to do that. It takes you below the recommended daily allowance for carbohydrate. Okay, so just to give you an idea of what you would eat in the hospital if you were, and they use this diet in children a lot to try and help control seizures with the goal of getting them off of it as soon as possible. So this is something that they actually use. It came from a children's hospital menu. This is a chicken salad, but as you'll see, it's really a fat salad. So three tablespoons of heavy cream. All right, a little cucumber and tomato, just a small handful. Wash that down with two tablespoons of seven ounces of chicken. That's like this, you know, a little couple dice. So that's, that's what they're starting kids on. You can see why people would need to be in the hospital to, to start this kind of diet. Now, in the wild, this is what keto diets tend to look like, right? Head nods, people seeing people eating this kind of stuff. I'm losing weight. If this looks like it's designed to give someone a heart attack, you wouldn't be too far off. So that was breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Again, this is straight from the keto blogosphere, not looking a whole lot better. We've got fried chicken, oil, animal products. At the top, it looks like, wow, we might actually have some vegetables, right? A little bit, and maybe even some whole grain toast but no, that's a fried egg underneath all those layers. So, does this diet actually work for anything? Like, why are we doing this? Or is it just is it just a fad? So, as I mentioned, it does work to help reduce the frequency of seizures for someone who cannot control their seizures with medication. So, it takes it down by about 50% in 50% of people. And you can see the modified Atkins, which is less intense, actually brings it down a little less, so it's not as good at controlling seizures. Why does it control seizures, do you think? Well, for one, it is depriving the brain of its preferred fuel, glucose, so that makes nerve cells a little less reactive. It also induces some changes with the neurotransmitters. So what about weight management, right? Because most people aren't going on this to control seizures, yes? They're going on this because they want to lose weight. So does it work for weight management? What do you guys think? Yes, no, maybe? Nodding, head shaking, okay, yeah. Well, you're all kind of right. It does lead to weight loss, but no more than any other diet that restricts calories. So there's no keto magic here. This is from the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics, their evidence analysis library. But that was actually older, that was from 2006. So let's look at some more current stuff. This is a data from a meta-analysis. That's a study of studies. 
and it found out that compared to a low-fat diet, I'm going to put low-fat in air quotes here because it's really about the same amount of fat that's in the standard American diet. Um, compared to low-fat diets, keto diets do cause a little more weight loss in the first year, but in the second year, there's no difference at all. So do they work for weight loss? Yeah, only if you keep restricting calories. So let's talk about weight loss versus fat loss. And this is something where we know exactly what people were eating. Don't, don't panic, I know it's more science coming at you, but you, you got this. So this is from a study that was done over at the National Institutes of Health, and it took people, it took 17 overweight and obese men, and they asked these people to stay in a metabolic ward for two months. So they gave up their lives, they went into a metabolic ward where all their food was provided to them, and they actually had their metabolic rate measured, everything was measured for, again, two months straight. What they did, the first 15 days, they had them, they put them on a diet and got the calorie level adjusted so they were losing a slow, steady amount of weight over time. And so the first 15 days are actually not shown on this graph because they were getting them to that slow, steady weight loss. So starting at day 15, still on a balanced diet here. This is like half carbohydrates sort of thing. So on a you know normal diet, then at day zero, they introduced the keto diet. And what happens? Their weight goes down, right? This looks great, holy moly. And this is what's happening oftentimes in people who go on a keto diet. The numbers on the scale go down, they're like, hallelujah, my problems are solved, I'm gonna fit in that bikini, this is great. But what's actually happening? They're losing weight, but are they losing fat? Well, this is what the fat loss graph looks like. And again, I'm gonna walk you through it. The first 15 days of the two months that they stayed there are not shown. They were getting them to this slow, steady, rate of weight loss, which you see in the first third of this graph. Day zero, the keto diet comes in. What happens to the weight loss? I'm sorry, to the fat loss. We saw what happened to the weight loss went down. The fat loss, it actually starts to kind of flatline. It slows down. So when people go on a keto diet, they're actually slowing the rate of fat loss. What they're seeing is a loss of fluid and lean muscle tissue. And most people, that's not what they want to lose. They want to lose the fat, right? So it turns out when people go on a keto diet, their fat loss actually slows down to the point that it took them as long to lose the same amount of fat that they lost in 15 days on a standard diet. It took them 30 days to lose that. And then they tend to catch up and it's about the same rate of weight loss as long as the calories are the same. But people's fat loss actually slows at the beginning. All right, so not awesome for weight loss. Okay, but what about heart disease? I mean, we looked at those meals, it doesn't look like it's gonna be too good, right? So you'd be right, we're looking at that same meta-analysis that we looked at for weight loss. And what happens after a year, some of the things seem to look a little better relative to the low-fat diet, which again is pretty much the standard American diet, the way it's written in these studies. Their triglycerides come down a little bit, about 16 points relative to the low-fat diet. Their good cholesterol goes up. So this is actually making keto look decent, right? But their bad cholesterol doesn't go down nearly as much on the keto diet as it does on the low fat diet. So that's not great for heart health. And it turns out that the devil's actually in the details on this. This is a single trial. This was actually funded by the you know, Atkins Nutritionals. So this is probably, you know, you can see who's funding it and what they find. But they took 120 people with high cholesterol and they put them on an Atkins style diet for 24 weeks versus um, a low, again, a low fat diet. So what they found was that the people on the Atkins style diet lost almost twice as much weight I should say they were on the Atkins style diet and they were on about 15, 30 different kinds of vitamin, mineral supplements. They took 15 pills a day in addition to the Atkins diet, just as a caveat. But they lost about twice as much weight. Their good cholesterol went up. Their triglycerides went down. So again, this is making keto look pretty decent. And their bad cholesterol stayed about the same. Now again, that's surprising in a sense because they lost about twice as much weight. So their bad cholesterol should have gone down a lot more and it didn't. So that's the first sign that something's not quite right. I should also say that about half of the keto group dropped out because it was they were not feeling it. Um, but when you look in, not at the average, but at individuals, you see that about a third of people had their bad cholesterol go up by more than 10%. One of them, and this is just in four weeks on the diet, you want your LDL, that bad cholesterol, you want that to be below 100. They started out in a bad place, and in four weeks, they ended up in a really bad place, so they had to drop out of the study. 
A second participant had their bad cholesterol go up by nearly 100 points in their time on the study. They had to drop, as you can imagine. And a third person developed severe chest pain and coronary heart disease. So needless to say, they had to drop from the study. So these are the kinds of things that can happen to individuals when they follow this style of diet. It is actively dangerous, and this is only for 24 weeks. So that was sort of overweight, older people. Let's talk about young, healthy people. Anyone here do CrossFit? No CrossFitters. All right, it's an incredibly intense workout. It's, at, it's got aerobics, it's got strength training, it's based on all different kinds of sports. These are some pretty hardcore people who do CrossFit. Um, the average age of people in this study, which was small, was only 12 people, was 31 years old. So 31 year old healthy fit people, what did they find? They put them on a keto diet for three months versus just no change at all. And they looked at their effects on, on their metabolic rate, on their blood work, and how well they perform. And what did they find? And again, this is ketogenic diet versus no change at all. What they found was that the keto group, because they actually cut calories, they did. They lost 12% of their body fat, no change in control, because they didn't change anything. Um, they didn't have any change in their metabolic rate. Their athletic performance didn't get any better. By all rights, it should have, because they actually worked out about twice as much as the other group, but eh, okay. And their blood work, they did have ketones in their blood, so they were actually following the diet. And their bad cholesterol was a little, well, we'll just say interesting. So this is the control group. They started in a good place, 88, again, below 100. That's what we wanted. And they ended in a fine place. This wasn't actually a statistically significant difference. So theirs didn't really change. The keto diet group started in a place that wasn't great. But again, this is in 12 weeks in young, healthy people. Look what happened. By the time these people finished 12 weeks on a keto diet, they needed a statin. That's pretty scary stuff. So this is an individual, his name was Jody Gorin. He was a 53-year-old businessman in Florida. And he actually went on, did a full workup, had his heart arteries scanned and they were clear about six months before he went on the Atkins style diet. He went on for two and a half years. In the first month or so, his cholesterol skyrocketed, but he stayed the course. And what happened after 2.5 years? This is a picture of the arteries that fed Jody Gordon's heart. And you want there to be darkness. You want, so the black in this picture is a good thing. What you're seeing is blood flow where there's blackness in this picture. And what you see for one of these arteries, the one in the middle there, it goes from being black to just disappearing. That's evidence of a 99% blockage in one of the main arteries feeding Jody's heart that's actually called the Widowmaker artery. He was pulled from the diet immediately. He had an emergency stent put in, um, and needless to say, he did not continue to follow that diet. So again, scary stuff can happen when people follow these kinds of diets. If you lose weight and fall over from a heart attack, you have not accomplished your goal. And again, the other piece here, we know the kind of diet that can actively reverse heart disease. We know what that looks like. It's based on whole plant foods. It gets very few of its calories from fat and it's vegan, vegetarian, or very heavily plant-based. We know that can actively help people's arteries clear out instead of clogging them up. So what about diabetes, right? You'd think, hey, this is a low-carb diet, blood sugar's too high in diabetes, so at least maybe we've got the cure for that, right? This could be good. So this is a study that compared a keto diet to a low glycemic index diet that looked, again, other than that, fairly similar to the standard American diet, A1C. That's a measure of blood sugar over a three month period. You want it to be lower. They found that it dropped 1.5 points on the keto diet, went down a little bit on the low, low GI diet. This is their blood sugar, their actual blood sugar went down on a keto diet, as you would expect, right? They're eating almost no carbohydrates. So if there's gonna be blood sugar, their body's probably just gonna have to make it. Uh, low GI diet, it still actually got better. So that's not bad. Medications to lower people's blood sugar, Almost everyone on the keto diet got off their meds. I mean, it sounds like we've cured diabetes, right? Case closed, drop the mic, time to go home. But what actually happened, and in the low GI group, they actually got about two thirds of people off their meds too, so not bad. But are we actually fixing anything or are we making things worse? I'm gonna posit to you that this is actually a Band-Aid effect. If you step on a nail, you're gonna have pain, right? Pain is the symptom of stepping on the nail. The pain doesn't cause the nail. The nail causes the pain. And the same is true for high blood sugar when it comes to diabetes. High blood sugar is the symptom of diabetes. It is not the underlying cause. And I'm gonna 
give you some fairly strong evidence that keto diets can actually make the underlying cause of diabetes worse, even as they make the symptom look like it's getting fixed. So, all right, if sugar is not the cause of diabetes, then what, what is? Well, we already talked about high blood sugar being the symptom. Fat buildup inside muscle cells is one of the key causes in type 2 diabetes and also inside liver cells, but primarily the muscle cells because the muscle cells are the cells that are using up most of the glucose besides the brain cells that your body takes in. Now, normally when you eat a meal, you're eating your, you know, you're eating your little falafel sandwich, your blood sugar, you're getting carbohydrate, your blood sugar is going to go up. Your body says, hey, we need to get that sugar out of the blood and into the cells where we can burn it for fuel. So how do we do that? We release insulin. Insulin brings blood sugar back down. Great. That's what's happening in a healthy person. In type 2 diabetes, you've got that fat building up in the muscle cells. What does that do? It acts like gum in the lock. So all of a sudden, insulin can't come open the door anymore. That insulin key can't get in. So instead of blood sugar getting out of the blood and into the cells where we can actually burn it, it just gets stuck in the blood. And over time, your body can't compensate for this. It literally can't make enough insulin to, to overcome this process and you end up with type 2 diabetes. So it's a little bit scary, but you can actually induce the earliest symptoms of type 2 diabetes in healthy young people in three days with a keto diet because they've done it and they've repeated it. So these are healthy young men. There were only, I think, nine or 10 folks in the study, so small, but they've done it multiple times. And again, these are men in their late 20s in this study. And they put them on a normal diet, that's ND, or a low carb, high fat diet, which you can see here. And then they gave them, they did that for three days and they gave them an oral glucose tolerance test. Any women out there with kids who's ever had to take an oral glucose tolerance test? Yeah, what do they do? It's nasty, they give you this big drink of pure glucose it doesn't taste very lovely from and they make you drink it down and then they test what happens to your blood sugar over the next two hours well in these young men you can see that the people on the standard diet their blood sugar went up and then it went down in a gentle curve as you would expect the people who've been on a keto diet had a spike in blood sugar and it stayed higher longer over the entire two-hour test and interestingly this is a graph of what happened with their insulin. The normal diet insulin goes up and then it comes back down in a more gradual curve. In the low fat, I'm sorry, the low carb, high fat group, it was sluggish to start, it spiked high and stayed higher longer. Interestingly, that sluggish start, that's called first phase insulin resistance. That's one of the early symptoms of type two diabetes and they were able to replicate that in just three days looking at a keto diet. So this is all a little hard to get your head around, right? So I'm gonna give you an analogy, a little story to make this to make this really something that you can, that's a little easier to digest. Ha, <laughs> dietitian humor. Okay, so this is Santa's toy making machine. So it has toy parts that come in. The machine takes the toy parts and it turns them into these super cute robots for all the girls and boys at Christmas time. So this is analogous to what's happening in a healthy body. You have glucose or blood sugar that comes into the cell. The cell does what it's supposed to do, burns it up, uses it up, and long-term health is the result. And again, this is glucose that's coming from your, from your whole grains, from your beans, from your starchy vegetables. So this is what's supposed to happen. Now, Santa is happy because everything's working the way it should. Now, this is what happens after the machine is all gunked up. It's not working well. The toy parts are building up. The elves can't move. It's a complete disaster zone in the workshop. And we're not really making very many toys here either. So Santa, and again, Santa's concerned. This is analogous to what's happening in someone with type 2 diabetes. Even if they bring in a healthy carbohydrate, their blood sugar goes up because the cells are all gunked up. They're all, they're, they're packed with fat. Nothing's working. The cells the blood sugar is building up and long-term health is suffering. So Santa's not happy about this. So he calls in one of his elves and he says, elf, I want you to fix this problem. So the elf says, hmm, thinking about this, what am I going to do? We're gonna call this the keto elf. So this is the keto elf solution. He's super happy with himself. What did he do? He stopped ordering so many toy parts right? So what happens, the machine, even though it's still gunky and icky, eventually it gets through the backlog. And because there's very few toy parts coming in, well, there aren't a lot of toys coming out, but the workshop's clean. 
It looks good. He's like, hey, Santa's going to be happy with this. And again, this is what's happening when you're on a keto diet with type 2 diabetes. You're just not bringing in any carbohydrate. So you don't have much blood glucose. It looks good, right? People get off their blood sugar lowering meds. They think everything's happy. Their doctor's happy, like, ooh, problem solved. But they haven't solved that underlying problem. The machine is still all gunky. The intramyocellular lipid, the lipid inside those muscle cells, it's all still there. And long-term health is suffering because they're not bringing in the foods that we know are linked to health and longevity. So Santa, while the elf is happy with himself, Santa is freaking out. I think that's the technical term. So why is Santa panicking? Because he knows in a few months they're going to have to ramp up toy production again. They're going to have to bring in more toy parts so they can make enough toys, but they can't. If they do that, the same exact thing is going to happen all over again because they haven't solved the root problem. The machine is still all dumped up. The cells are still still packed with those little fat droplets that are interfering with insulin signaling so that blood sugar is still going to rise even if they're eating something healthy like beans. So not a good situation because they haven't fixed the problem. So Santa does what Santa probably should have done in the first place, which was to ask the elf to go in and clean up the machine. And this is exactly what happens on a low-fat whole food, plant-based diet. And this can actually, you can get improvements in people's blood sugar even without weight loss on a low-fat, whole food, plant-based diet. It's pretty incredible stuff. So he sends the elf to go clean things up and lo and behold, everything, the balance is restored and everything is working again. The glucose comes in, the cell burns it and long-term health results because they're eating things like beans and grains and fruits and vegetables. So Santa's really happy, the elf is really happy and everybody wins, Christmas is saved, girls and boys around the world rejoice. So taking this back to the science now, we're gonna look at two studies. These are about 22 weeks in length. One was a keto diet and one was a low fat vegan diet. Now, both of them caused A1C or that measure of three month blood sugar to drop. A little bit more in the keto group, which we would expect now because we know there's no toy parts coming in. We're bringing in very little carbohydrates. So there's literally no glucose to have in your blood or very little and they got off their meds, and almost half of people in the low-fat vegan group also got off their meds. But what did the people in the low-fat vegan group do? They were also cleaning out the machine. So they were doing this with lots and lots of toy parts coming in the whole time. And the LDL, that's the bad cholesterol, we know that that doesn't do well with the keto diet, and it went down quite a bit on the low-fat vegan diet. And here's the piece, are they carbohydrate tolerant? We know for a fact, the people on the low fat vegan diet, we know they're carb tolerant because they got these improvements eating a high carbohydrate diet. It's pretty amazing. People on the keto diet I can almost guarantee you they didn't do it, but if they brought back even healthy things like barley or beans or sweet potatoes, that their blood sugar would go back up again. So this is why what Santa had in mind was the right thing to do to stick with those low fat whole plant foods if you're trying to improve or reverse diabetes. Okay, what about Alzheimer's? Has anyone heard of keto for Alzheimer's? Yeah, it's, it's actually a thing. Okay, I'm glad you're hearing this here and that you can understand what's going on. People have used keto diets for Alzheimer's. Why? Well, in Alzheimer's disease, the brain doesn't respond well to insulin. It doesn't bring glucose into the nerve cells very well. It's actually been called type three diabetes in the research literature. Now there are lots of causes for Alzheimer's, but this is, this is likely one of them. So, you know, if they have brains can't use glucose and they need a substitute, then maybe ketones would be that substitute, right? So they actually did a trial. Uh, it turns out that people with Alzheimer's disease aren't really into going on a keto diet. So they didn't, they, they're not into diet change typically. So they went ahead and put them on a medication that induced mild ketosis. So it made the body produce some ketones. And what they found was that people did get symptomatic improvement. And if someone can't recognize their kids and all of a sudden, because they have advanced Alzheimer's and then they can recognize their children, you know, that's, that's a very short term, that's a benefit. But here's where I get really worried. People think, wow, this works in the short term to improve some of the symptoms of diabetes. I'm gonna follow this diet to prevent it because my mom has diabetes. And that's the scary part because while this makes the symptoms of diabetes, there's some evidence that it might make, I'm sorry, symptoms of Alzheimer's disease a little bit better. 
in the long term, it actually greatly increases the risk of Alzheimer's disease. It raises LDL bad cholesterol. We know that's a risk factor for Alzheimer's. It's likely making insulin resistance worse. So I get very concerned when people say, keto diets for Alzheimer's disease, the study said it could make symptoms better because my mom or dad has Alzheimer's, I'm gonna go on this now to prevent it when they're actually probably hastening the onset of that disease. So just as a little side note here, if you wanna do something that can actually help in terms of reducing your risk for Alzheimer's disease gradually, we've got Power Foods for the Brain, The Alzheimer's Solution, two fantastic books that I recommend you look into. All right, so benefits and risks of keto diets. There are some benefits. There aren't very many, and I feel like I'm being magnanimous here to give them. But we do know that they reduce seizures. There's no question about that. Uh, we do know that people don't want to eat as much on a keto diet, so they do reduce calorie intake over at least a shorter period of time. They do improve, improve blood sugar control because there's not that much blood sugar to control. And then finally, we know that they, raised, they lower triglycerides and raise good cholesterol. So... There are a lot of risks and side effects. I've actually divided them into the short-term side effects and the long-term risks. So we'll start with the short-term side effects. Nutrient deficiencies. The Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics recommends that everyone who's doing a keto diet for seizures be on multiple vitamins and minerals because these diets are deficient in vitamins, minerals, and the phytochemicals found in healthy whole plant foods. So you have a diet that's really high in animal products and fat and really low in fiber. Does that sound like a no-go situation to you guys? Yeah, me too. Uh, this is something that when people go on a keto diet the first few weeks, I'm going to say it's affectionately called the keto flu in the blogosphere. That doesn't sound like something that I want to experience. Thanks anyways. Um, and then impaired glucose tolerance, inducing the first, the first symptoms of type 2 diabetes, three days on a keto diet in young healthy people. So not going to necessarily be a good long-term fix there. Um, a single high-fat meal can actually impair your arteries' ability to widen. Now, why does that matter? If you're going to run anywhere, you're going to need to get blood not only to your, to your leg muscles, but to your heart. If you want to do other things, you may need to get blood other places. So if you have a single high-fat meal, that can actually interfere with that. We know that it raises people's bad cholesterol. Um, in the short term, in particular, sprint performance goes down when people are following a keto diet. Again, that makes sense because there's not much glucose for muscles to use. And then if anyone's ever, does anyone have gout or know someone who's had gout? Know somebody who has gout? Super painful. They get a lot of pain right at the base of their big toe, other joints. It's really intense. Um, increasing your intake of animal products is a great way to increase the risk of having gout or gout attack because they're high in something called purines. But wait, there's more. So one of the ketones that your body makes when you are on a keto diet is acetone. Ladies, does anyone know what acetone is also found in? Yes, I'm seeing nail polish remover. That's right. Do you know how your body gets rid of acetone? It off-gasses it in your breath. So you may be going on this diet to attract that romantic partner, but you're going to be having breath that smells like nail polish remover. So just keep that in mind. So that covers the short-term risks which are, some of these are kind of a little bit entertaining, but the long-term risks are not funny at all. So there's an increased risk of dying from all causes on low-carbohydrate diets. That right there is enough said. If you're thinking about a keto diet, you're increasing your risk of dying from all causes. I feel like I could just like put the mic down and walk away, but I won't because there's more. Uh, increased risk of colon cancer. People are increasing their intake of animal products. Again, these are supposed to be low protein diets, but they in practice are high protein diets. That increases the risk of colon cancer. White meat, not off the hook here. That's very grilled white meats in particular are high in heterocyclic amines. Those are a carcinogen, meaning they can cause cancer. Increased risk of kidney stones. If anyone's had a kidney stone or knows someone who has, I've heard it, I've heard it likened to the pain of childbirth. Um, extremely painful condition, increased intake of animal protein is linked to an increased risk of kidney stones. And you also get a higher exposure to pollutants. So I don't know how many of you are aware of this, but when we consume things that have you know small amounts of pesticides or herbicides, those are often fat soluble. They collect in our fat deposits. The same thing happens with animals. They bioaccumulate these toxins and pollutants. They're called persistent organic pollutants. And when people are eating large amounts of animal fat in particular, they are eating this concentrated source of persistent organic pollutants. So something to keep in mind. But wait, there's more. 
This one really gets me. There's a 30% increase in risk for spina bifida and anencephaly. Those are, in many cases, non-survivable birth defects. They happen in the first month of pregnancy. That's exactly when a lot of women don't even know that they are pregnant. So when women of reproductive age go on a keto diet, they are increasing their risk of these very severe birth defects. And again, they may not even know that they're pregnant at the time. So this is something that if you are of childbearing age, please, please, please do not go on a keto diet. This appears to be related to low intakes of folate because you're eliminating beans and greens and other carbohydrate foods. So very concerning. Uh, impaired artery function. They know that this is actually from a study of six different studies showing that high fat, low carb diets actually injury artery walls. So that's problematic. And then worsen heart disease. We know that it raises bad cholesterol. We also have studies that show that it actually decreases blood flow to the heart to be on a keto style diet. So some really good reasons to not do a keto diet. All right, so that's all the big stuff. Now let's get into some of these frequently asked questions. So here's the first one, and I think it's appropriate for this audience. What about vegan keto? We've heard of this, right? People, you know, might be doing it. Okay, well, of course, the animal product version is not healthy, but maybe, maybe the vegan version is better. And the answer is we just don't have an answer right now. So we don't have a single study. There's no trial out there that is looking at a vegan keto diet. What we do have is a trial of a borderline low-carbohydrate vegan diet. So it's not keto, it's not even low carb, but it's right there on the edge. So it gets you just, just at that level of the RDA for carbohydrates. And they also, all the protein of course is from plant sources in this diet and they had it be very high in soluble fiber. Does anyone know what soluble fiber does? Anybody, no, question, maybe, yeah. It actually, well it helps, it, all fiber helps move things along, but it actually lowers your bad cholesterol. So, what they found was that people lost a little more weight on a Eco Atkins diet, so a vegan low carb diet, lowish carb, relative to a sort of standard American but vegetarian diet. Their bad cholesterol went down about 19 points. Now how much of that is due to the fact that they're on a different diet versus they also increased their soluble fiber a lot? We don't know. Their triglycerides also went down a little bit and their 10 year risk of having a heart attack or any sort of cardiovascular event went down by about 2%. So relative to these other keto diets, yeah, this looks pretty good. But relative to a low fat whole food plant-based diet, which we know won't just reduce your risk a little bit for heart disease, but can actively reverse it, it doesn't look that great. So is it better than a standard keto diet? Absolutely. Is it recommended? Not at this time. Okay, are keto diets the same as high protein diets? Raise your hand. Who thinks it is the same? Oh, you guys, who thinks that it's not the same? All right, you guys are all right. This is kind of a trick question. So we know that in theory, in theory, as this gentleman said, he was the one who did the study on athletic performance. Um, ketogenic diet, the whole goal is to starve the body of carbohydrate. So if there's too much protein, then the body is just gonna use that to make carbohydrates. So in theory, it should be low protein. In practice in the real world, as any of you know who's talked to anyone who's doing this kind of diet, it's pretty high in protein. Okay, has anyone talked to someone who says, but I feel better on a keto diet? Yeah, every now and again, yeah, most people don't, but some people do, so what's going on with that? Because it seems like it shouldn't make them feel better. And the, the question here is to find out why there's usually something else going on. For some people, they lose weight and it doesn't matter. They fit back into that pair of jeans they haven't worn in two years and then it doesn't matter if they feel lousy. Otherwise, they're feeling so good about themselves that overall, they're just gonna feel better. Um, for some people, if they go from drinking a lot of soda and eating chips along with their fast food and then they switch over to eating a lot of fat and more animal products, but they're eating loads of non-starchy vegetables with it, they might actually feel better because they are getting in more nutrients than they had before. Again, that's a really low bar to clear, but it's entirely possible. Again, more vegetables. I'm all about vegetables. Eat more vegetables, you're in the right place. And then finally, some people have a trigger food they didn't know they were sensitive to. A lot of people with celiac disease, for instance, are not, they don't know they have it. So they eliminate wheat, which for everyone else is perfectly healthy, but they eliminate wheat on a keto diet and they think, oh wow, this keto diet is great, when really they eliminated the wheat that was triggering their celiac disease. So something like that could be it. So the question is, hey, why don't we try and look for the benefits and then replicate that, but on a healthy, whole food, plant-based diet? 
All right, show of hands, who's heard of Bulletproof Coffee? Okay, yeah, well, I'm gonna lose weight, I'm gonna drink this Bulletproof Coffee, it's loaded up with, well, we'll see what it's loaded up with. All right, so this is Bulletproof Coffee. If you haven't heard of this, you are in for, I wouldn't call it a treat, it's, it's, a, uh, I don't know why they would do this to a perfectly good cup of coffee, because it starts out okay. You start out with a cup of coffee, great, antioxidants, there's some evidence it might even decrease Parkinson's risk a little bit, so if you like coffee, but not too much. Um, then they add one to two tablespoons of butter, and if you're going for full authenticity, you want to go for yak butter, but for most people, it's just plain old butter, sometimes grass-fed. Uh, then you're going to add one to two tablespoons of octane oil. Has anyone heard of this? Anyone know? It's also, it's just a fancy version of medium-chain triglyceride oil. That's a whole nother presentation, but you want to make sure that you're using a high-quality version of, of medium-chain triglycerides or octane oil, because if you don't, one of the side effects is disaster pants. <laughs> I'm going to let, yeah, I'm going to let you guys Google that, but it is pretty much what it sounds like. So at the end of the day, Bulletproof Coffee gives you a 480 calorie cup of coffee. That's, that's a meal for most people. It gives you one quarter cup of nearly pure fat, almost all of it saturated. So if you wanna be healthy, please, if you wanna be Bulletproof, just run away from Bulletproof Coffee. All right, so in summary, keto diets, what can we say? They trigger that emergency backup system. They do help with seizures. They have mixed results for other conditions, and again, I feel like I'm being kind here. And they have a lot of risks and side effects. And they, and we know, this just from a common sense standpoint, they eliminate the foods that we know are most linked to long-term health and, longev and longevity. So it seems like it would be a bad idea, and indeed it is. So they are not a risk worth taking, in my opinion, looking at the science. And instead, I think we should all be focusing on fruits, vegetables, whole grains, beans, peas, lentils, these foods that we know are associated with, with excellent optimal health. So if you want to learn more, we have the Physicians Committee's Exam Room podcast hosted by Chuck Carroll, who I actually see there in the back. That's right. And also, as Dr. Barnard mentioned, the 21 Day Vegan Kickstart app. You can get it Google Play or on the Apple Store, any of these things. I encourage you guys to check it out. And thank you for your attention.